Welcome to lesson one about elements of pitch. This corresponds with the tonal harmony book in chapter one. Um, specifically, you'll see it's in part one of fundamentals, chapter one, elements of pitch, pages one through three. And this corresponds with our topic 1.1 pitch and pitch notation from the college board from our AP syllabus. So the things that we are going to go over today are the keyboard and octave registers and notation on the staff. And there'll also be a section at the end for you to test yourself. Um, for a lot of you, this is review, but make sure that you look at this and you feel comfortable with it because these are things we're going to use every single day in class and you need to be really confident and really comfortable in them to move forward. So let's talk about the keyboard and octave registers. And before I go to the next slide, you're going to see some vocab. You do not need to pause it and write this down now because there's a vocab recap at the end that has all the vocabulary words you will need. So we're going to first talk about pitch. And the most basic definition for pitch is the highness and lowness of a sound. There is a more complex definition as you can see, it's a perceptual property of sounds that allows their ordering on a frequency related scale, or more commonly, pitch is the quality that makes it possible to judge sounds as higher and lower in the sense associated with musical melodies. For us, our working definition of highness and lowness of sound, that is what you're going to need day to day. But our perceptual property, our brain perceives that things are higher or lower based on the frequency of those sound waves. So, for right now, focus on highness and lowness, but that is your more scientific definition. And there are lots of awesome videos that I will post in your classroom that can help you understand the scientific part of pitch more. And also super important to know is that pitches are named using the first seven letters of the alphabet, A, B, C, D, E, F, and G. After G, you just start back over with A. And we're about to see that on the keyboard. So hopefully when you're looking at example 1-1, you have a basic understanding of how the keyboard works. That if this is C, you would have C, D, E, F, G, A, B, till you get back to C. And if you look at C4, middle C, you'll notice that um, there's two black keys to the right of your C. And you might notice that that happens at every C. Our keyboard is set up in patterns, two black keys, and then three black keys, two black keys, three black keys. Every time the C is to the left of those two black keys, you can see it starting over at C1 and going all the way to C8. And another basic truth about the keyboard that I think you know coming into this course, but just in case you're not sure, the left side of the keyboard is where your lower pitches are. C1 is going to sound the lowest. And as you travel towards the right, you're getting higher and higher in pitch until C8 is the highest C on the keyboard. And I'm going to go off of our slideshow for a second and play this for you on the piano. So this virtual piano actually only goes to C2 is our lowest. So here's our lowest C2. Turn up a little bit, C2. Here's C3, C4, middle C, C5, C6, and C7. And right now we're focusing on C, but that works for any note. So if I uh, start with G's, I would have. All right, so we will come back to the keyboard later, but right now let's look here and we, I said we'll come back later, but we're already back. Sorry about that. So if I just say go to the keyboard and play a C, you can play any C, but we have these designations so that if I say C2, we would always hear the same note. If I said C7, we'd always hear the same note and it would be much higher than C2. So as we're moving on here, an octave could start anywhere. The definition the book is giving us is from any C up to or down to the next C is called an octave. So uh, that could be from C to C, it could be from A to A, it could be from F sharp to F sharp. If there are eight notes apart, it's an octave. And we could really easily remember that because it has the same root oct, like octopus and octagon, octave, they all have eight. So again, our book definition says from any C up to or down to the next C is called an octave. But again, it could be any note, but they're sticking with C because next we're gonna talk about octave register and that is dependent on C. So when we go back to our keyboard, you'll see our middle C is C4. And the next note is D4. 
all of the notes from this C up to the next C are going to have a 4. So C4, D4, E4, F4, G4, A4, B4, and then we would start with C5. So if this is C5, what would this note be? Hopefully you said D5, right? Because we're going in alphabetical order and we are now into fives in once we got to this C was C5, D5, E5. So the same thing going in the reverse direction, we have C4. So before that would be B3. What would be B4, B3? Hopefully you said A3, then we would have G3, F3. So notes that are in the same octave register, it's all the pitches, but not up to, but not including the next C. When you get to the next C is when you change to the next number. So now we're going to go on to notation on the staff. And if you think back to our definition of pitch, that's going to help you a little bit because we have a y-axis of pitch, which refers to the highness and lowness of sound. So you can see as you travel up on the y-axis, your pitch is getting higher. So if I have these two uh, graphed points, R and S, R would be higher in pitch because it's higher on the y-axis. If I'm looking at my x-axis for time, R would happen before S because just like when we read left to right, time is increasing. Well, this is exactly how we read music. If I pull up two notes on a musical staff. We don't know their exact pitch because we do not have a clef to reference, but you know that you would read this note first and this note second. We go from left to right as time passes in music. We also know that the first note would be higher than the second note. It's higher on the staff, just like in that graph, the pitch is higher of the first note rather than the second note. So we use a staff to indicate the precise pitch desired. A staff has five lines and four spaces. Sometimes we need ledger lines. So ledger lines are short lines added for notes above, sorry for the typo, I will go back and fix that, or below the range of the staff. It can be used to extend the staff indefinitely. So if we look up at our picture, our staff are the five lines and four spaces where music is written. Sometimes we have ledger lines to continue the staff higher or lower. You may need to really practice notes on the ledger lines, especially if you play an instrument or sing a voice part that doesn't use the other ledger lines. For example, if you play the flute, you're going to be really familiar with the notes on these ledger lines up here, but you're probably going to have a lot harder time recognizing what note is which on these lines down here. So that may be something you have to really practice in the next couple days. So now, to really know what pitch is which, you need a clef. A clef has to appear at the beginning of the staff to indicate which pitches are associated with which lines and spaces. So you can see we start with our G clef or treble clef, and that is a clef that you're going to be very familiar with if you sing alto or soprano, if you play the flute or the trumpet, and you can see C4 is near the bottom of the those ranges, so it's near the bottom of the staff. If we move to F clef or bass clef, you will see that C4 is way up at the top because bass clef is for tenor and bass voices. It is for trombone, tuba, for low instruments. So that same C4 middle C is going to be near the top of their range. We also have our C clef, our alto clef, and these are clefs that you're not going to be as familiar with. Um, the C clef, the alto clef, is mostly used for viola. Um, but you can write anything in tenor clef, especially um, vocal music. And music from the Middle Ages uses these clefs more often, and we will look at some of those in class. Now, you can see that in the alto clef, C4 is right in the middle on the third line where there's an indent. Okay, when you are using clefs other than the treble clef or the bass clef, then you are going to look for that indent and that is where C, middle C, C4 is located. If you look over at the tenor clef, uh, which is sometimes used for cello, bassoon, or trombone, then you will see that the indentation is one line up. And that is where your C4, your middle 
see is going to be on that tenor clef. So those clefs are not as commonly used, but you are going to see them on the AP test. And the easiest way to remember is where that indent is in the clef is where your C is located. The grand staff is the combination of the treble and bass clefs clefs with a brace. So you can see we have our treble clef on top, which makes sense because treble is higher. We have our bass clef on the bottom and they're connected with a brace. You see this most commonly with piano. You can see it for other instruments and other um, orchestrations, but you're going to see this if you play the piano. This is how piano music is written. And the interesting thing about the grand staff is that they are connected and they are relative. So F4 in our treble clef is just what you expect. When you get to C4, they had to draw a ledger line because there is not a line there for that note. Well, if you look down at the bass clef, you see the same thing, one ledger line above the clef. That's actually the same note. If those clefs were closer, those staves were closer together, that note would be at the same place. Usually they look different because the music is spread out. So if you look over at A3, there's two ledger lines. The one you would have for C, a space for B, the next line for A. Well, that line is actually the top line of the bass clef, right? This ledger line, the first one, is your in-between line, that imaginary line that's connecting the staves. And then this ledger line is this top line. As you can see right here, there's your A3 because the staffs, the staves are connected. The opposite effect is happening at E4. Here's my line for middle C. Here's my imaginary D, and then here's a ledger line for E. Well, E4 is on the first bottom line of the treble clef staff. This line here is what you have drawn in here. So that can be a little tricky sometimes. Please practice that if you're not used to using two staffs connected into a grand staff or staves connected into a grand staff. Let's go back to our vocab. So you can pause this and write these down. I would highly suggest making flashcards. I am gonna quiz you on these. So this would be a great time to pause and do that if you have not yet. Now we're gonna go on to test yourself. So it says name the pitches in the blanks provided using the correct octave register designation. So example, they wrote it in C4. So make sure that you write C4, you don't just write C. So if you are going to test yourself, you need to pause it now because um, when you come back, I'm going to put the answers on the screen. So pause now. And here are your answers. Check your work. If you are confused, make sure you figure out where your error was or come to class tomorrow or email and ask what is going on. Why are you getting the wrong answer? We're going to go on to the next one now. Notate the indicated pitches on the staff in the correct octave. So make sure you're looking at your clef and notate those pitches on the staff. Pause it now because I'm about to show the answers. So here are your answers. You can see that it is a little askew there when I copied it, okay? But check them out. Again, figure it out if you made a mistake and if you don't know why it's a mistake, come to class, email me, make sure you understand this because we aren't going to go over it again. And the last one, test yourself with the grand staff. Now you have to write those pitches on connected staves. And then here are your answers. You may have something slightly different. For example, on the very first one, it says E4. Most of you probably wrote that on the treble clef, but if you wrote it on the bass clef and you wrote two ledger lines, that's correct. So you might have to figure out yourself a couple times here. Did you actually have the wrong answer or do you have the same answer just on the opposite uh, clef staff? If you are confused, email me. I want your questions. I want to help you because if you don't say anything, I'm going to assume that you understand this material. 
We have lots to cover, so make sure that you know what you are doing and you're really comfortable with this material. I'm happy to help you, but if you don't say anything, I won't know that you need help.